I've been using the Redmi Note 13 for a little over a week now, and I can tell you right away that there are some good surprises and one not so good surprise. It all makes sense soon. So this is the design that they went with. It's a different look from its predecessor, the Note 12, and it's also not the usual triple camera iPhone look that almost every budget phone these days come with. It's not like there's anything wrong with that per se, it's just nice to see something a little bit different. I actually complained in my Note 12 review about the generic way the phone looked, and I think with this, they've kind of fixed that. Am I saying that they watched my video and then made changes to their design? N no, but I'm going to think that. <laughs> that aside, the design looks nice, especially in this green color. It looks like it has a glass back, but it actually doesn't. It's plastic, glossy plastic. Not the biggest fan, but at least they made the sides matte. They also made the phone thicker and slightly heavier. Both are changes I really don't mind. If you're super observant, then you probably have seen the first surprise. Redmi went with a regular power button, so the fingerprint sensor is not on the power button. Instead, it's under the display. So we have an optical under display fingerprint reader on the Redmi Note 13, which can be both a good thing and also a not so good thing. Under display fingerprint sensors are more futuristic and frankly, look way cooler, but they're also less secure, not as fast and also not as accurate. Even while setting up the fingerprint sensor, it does tell you that some screen protectors might interfere with its ability to work well. I couldn't exactly test this, but I think most screen protectors would be fine. I don't think this would be that big an issue. But yeah, that's what I mean by it's a good thing and a not so good thing. But I think personally, I would still pick this over a side mounted fingerprint sensor. Another surprise, this time a purely good one, is the addition of a second speaker. So we have a stereo speaker setup on the Note 13 and the speakers sound very fine. Next to the top speaker, you'd find the headphone jack, which is awesome but note that you don't get wired earphones in the box. Still on the top, you'd find the IR blaster and one microphone. The left side of the phone is completely free because the SIM tray has been moved to the bottom of the phone. You want to also note that they went with a hybrid SIM tray, meaning you can only choose between having two SIM cards and no SD card or one SIM card and one SD card. So for those people with two SIMs, you might want to get a higher storage variant. Wrapping up the tour, we have a USB-C port, which is colored white on the inside. Don't think it has any functionality, but it looks cool. We also have the second mic and the main downward firing speaker at the bottom. The Note 12 had an IP53 rating, while this has an IP54 rating, so slightly better protection. It's looking pretty good so far. They've managed to spice things up and they've also made some improvements too. The improvements continue with the display. They've reduced the bezels around the display, especially the chin, and that brings the screen to body ratio up to 87.5%. It's nothing too crazy. I think it's about 4% different from last year, but as soon as I took this phone out the box and turned it on, I could immediately tell that they've reduced the bezels. So I'm going to count that as an upgrade. The display resolution is still 1080p. Its refresh rate is still 120Hz, and it's still an AMOLED display. Even though it's mostly the same display as last year, it doesn't mean it's not still impressive. It's impressive, and it looks good too. Its peak brightness is now at 1800 nits, which means outdoors, you should have no issues using this phone. There aren't really any surprises with the display, just slight improvements. Redmi going from a 50 megapixel to a 108 megapixel main camera definitely surprised me. But then I remembered that the TechnoSpark 20 Pro and the Infinix Hot 40 Pro both come with that same 108 megapixel sensor. So it wasn't as impressive anymore. 108 megapixels is still a lot. That's twice the megapixel count of the Note 12. 
So one might think it's going to be twice as good as the Note 12, but as we know, that's not how it works. The photos from the main camera are fine. I don't have the Note 12 with me. It would have been cool to do a side-by-side -side comparison to know for sure, but I think the camera quality is just about the same or maybe slightly better than last year. The Note 12's camera was pretty good, so this is still pretty good. You want to note though that for you to take 108 megapixel photos, you need to shoot in the 108 megapixel mode. You also need to be pretty stable and wait for about a second to take the photo. When you do, you would come out with a more crisp and detailed photo for sure. Now, although that's great, I just feel like most people just open the camera app and hit the shutter button. So at the end, most people would be shooting videos in the default mode, which is not the 108 megapixel mode. But for the photographers and camera enthusiasts, I'm sure they would love to have this option. It's still a triple camera setup. So the other two cameras are an eight megapixel ultra wide and a two megapixel macro camera. The ultra wide is the more useful of the two, but it's softer and less detailed, of course. But if you do give it enough light, it can produce decent looking images. The selfie camera also gets an upgrade, technically, from 13 megapixels to 16. I personally did not like the selfies that I produced, but do let me know what you think in the comments. Also, note that by default, it applies some smoothening to your face. So you might want to click on this button right here and then reduce that to the lowest. For video, it shoots max at 1080p and has image stabilization. Unfortunately, the Snapdragon 685 caps the video recording resolution at 1080p. So 4K wasn't even on the table. With that said, 1080p is still fine. And to get the best results, make sure you shoot outdoors or with a ton of light and you should be fine. Now here's the one surprise I referred to in the intro as being not so good. Redmi went with the same Snapdragon 685 processor as the Note 12. Although the 685 is a very decent processor for the price, using the same processor as the previous year is typically frowned upon, especially by tech enthusiasts. The China variant of the Note 13, which is also the Note 13 5G, comes with the Dimensity 6080 processor. So just to clarify, this is the Note 13 4G not the 5G variant. My unit is the highest spec available, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And as you can probably imagine, my experience was great. Everyday tasks like opening apps, switching between them, scrolling on social media, gaming, this phone had no issues handling them. And just like I said with the Note 12, for its price, performance is top notch. I would suggest trying to get the variant with at least six gigs of RAM, cause the more RAM you have, the better your experience would be. And then for the gamers, it would play basically all games and play the heavier games at medium graphic settings, which is fine. This is another department where we don't get an upgrade. Even though the phone is thicker, we still get the same 5,000 milliamp hour battery. With average use, it should last the whole day. But with heavy use, say you're gaming for seven, eight hours non-stop, then yeah, you need to plug in the phone before the end of the day. Charging speeds are also the same as last year, 33 watts. And also just like last year, you get that 33 watt charger inside the box, which not a lot of manufacturers do these days. With a charger, it takes about an hour, 10-ish minutes to fully charge this phone. For software, this is running on Android 13 on top of MIUI 14, which is kind of a bummer because Android 14 has been out for a while now, but I am hearing that this should get Android 14 and also the new Hyper OS soon. No dates yet, but soon. So that's the Redmi Note 13. It's an upgrade definitely from the Note 12. Better design, better hardware, better cameras, brighter display, but same performance and same battery experience. Even though it's an upgrade, I wouldn't recommend switching from the Note 12 to this, unless you really want that 108 megapixel sensor. 
And then in terms of how it compares to the competition, well, I still think that this is a solid contender for best in its price, but it's, it's close, it's close. So I would say stay tuned for the comparisons to come. Um, also do let me know what you think of the Note 13 and I'll see you when you see me.